It's gonna be that kind of video. Hi! <laughs> We're finally making a video about money. I try to stay away from this subject just because of the nature of money. It makes people feel weird. It makes people act weird. People want to get money, but people also like shaming other people for also wanting money. So I'm gonna give you a huge disclaimer before we start. I'm gonna tell you that uh, most of the things that I'm gonna be talking about are from personal experience. They're gonna be opinions and, and basically observation. I have been a full-time content creator for four, maybe, maybe five years. Now now. And of course, in order to sustain myself, I've been able to make money enough to pay all the bills and to put food on the table, sometimes too much food. <laughs> I don't know if I'm keeping this in, <laughs> but I just wanted to share a little bit of knowledge. I initially wanted to make one of those, hey, five ways to make money while streaming. I'll probably still do this because those videos seem to get more views. But for now, we're going to sit down. We're going to talk about a couple of things. I'm going to give you a couple of myths. I'm going to give you a couple of secrets, if you will, or things that people are usually uncomfortable uh, talking about. If you do all of this content creation, that is as a hobby, this does not apply to you. You, <laughs> A hobby is a hobby. OK, I'm not here to teach you how to enjoy your hobby. It's not a hobby if you don't enjoy it. The video subject is money. So we're going to be treating content creation as a job. You might have noticed that uh, this little thing here is the brand new Elgato DX. There's going to be a review coming soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. If you're not subscribed yet, come on. Come on, son. All right, quick message from our sponsor and then we can begin. If you go to own.gg slash level, this is my special link. You're gonna see that owned is basically the one-stop shop for everything you need as a live streamer, but even as a content creator, you want like banners, profile pictures and all that, um, custom overlays. The big thing with owned right now is that they have the official Call of Duty gear, <laughs> as they call it basically. All of those overlays are official Call of Duty uh, overlays that you can download from owned. And another great thing that um, they just came out with is uh, creating emotes. So you can create your own emotes, right? And it's not like you're gonna create emotes one by one. You're gonna create one emote from like a character that vaguely resembles you and then own will generate the rest. But now they have animated emote maker. So the, the emotes that you create, you can animate them. If you already have emotes, you can also animate them by clicking make your own animation. You can log in with your Twitch channel. Basically, it's going to find all the emotes that you have already on your channel. It's going to show you some animations that you can have that are uh, applicable to everything else. Basically, for example, here you're going to see that I have this uh, this emote. This is what it looks like. And when you hover, it's going to show you the animation right there. So depending on what you want, you can just pick and choose. And uh, there it is. Another cool thing with owned is that they're always running promotions right now. There's a 50% sale on uh, all products. If you type the code streaming, so check it out over at own.gg slash gal level. That is O W N 3D dot G slash gal level. All right, sit back, relax. And uh, we're going to be talking about this freely. I have a couple of points. I have like four points written down and then the rest I'm just going to freestyle. So one of the first things that you need to think about is the content, right? It's basically what you're going to be selling. It's going to be your main thing, what you're going to be known for. So if you want to make money doing it, you need to, you know, think about a couple of things like what is the content going to be? I know that most of my audience, you're live streamers. And I also know that the huge majority just wants to be live streamers. Basically, you want to sit down, chill, play Call of Duty and get paid for it. Right. There is a way of doing it like are you just sitting there bored out of your mind and not putting absolutely any effort into your presentation and how you act on stream? Or are you like that hype Call of Duty streamer who also will start a live stream as soon as there is a new patch, uh, keep people updated on other platforms, make news videos. Hey guys, I heard this DLC is coming out, blah, blah, blah. Like that's the whole difference between a professional content creator and just someone that's doing it as a hobby, but also complaining that they're not getting money from it. Oh, did I mention that this was going to involve hard work? I'm sorry. I know half of you probably clicked off the video now. The thing with content is that you need skills in order to produce content because you're producing most of the time multimedia content, audio, video. You're sitting in front of a camera, talking to a camera that takes actually some skill. This is not something that comes naturally. The first day that you're going to sit down and look into the camera, you're not going to be comfortable. You're not going to be able to express yourself loudly. So this take it's a skill that you learn over time. So practicing is a good thing. You'll need to learn how to edit your own videos or if you're full of money to throw away, you can just pay an editor right off the bat. But the goal here is not to teach you how to invest in content creation. The goal is to be a content creator starting from the minimum. I was going to say nothing, but you probably need a phone. You probably need a computer, a camera or whatever. Anyways, I don't want to spend too much time on the whole content part. Just giving you the idea of your content needs to be watchable. <laughs> it needs to be listenable if you're doing audio content. Basically, your content needs to be decent. At least it's the minimum is that your content is decent. Quick tangent. I know that some people self-sabotage by saying that they're perfectionist. 
So they'll be like, mm, my first YouTube video, I'm going to take three months to edit it. And it's still going to be trash. It's going to be trash. It's your first YouTube video. Anyways, make decent content. Thrive to make decent content. <laughs> okay. Second point I wrote down is uh, figuring out your main platform. Not all platforms are equal, right? Uh, someone might say, hey, my latest TikTok got a million views. And you'll be like, wow, that's super impressive. Not a lot of people get a TikTok with one million views. And then you ask them how much money you made off of that. And they're going to say zero. <laughs> Most of the time, they're going to say zero. Um, you're going to be like, oh, you probably got a couple of sponsors. Yeah, I got a couple of weird, shady companies that sent me emails through that. Uh, I had to refuse them all because they're super shady. And congrats, you accomplished something that just a couple of people managed to do by having a million views, but uh, it led to nothing. I'm not saying do not be a TikToker, but I'm giving an example of platform. Let's say a platform like Twitch, where you can technically make money on day one. You can start your stream and you are allowed to make money because Twitch is more like donation based and subscribe. It, all the money is coming straight from your viewers. But just because you can make money on day one doesn't mean you're going to easily make a ton of money. The average professional, rich Twitch streamer is streaming 12 hours a day. If Is that something that you want? Is that how you envision your future? Think about that. Then there's YouTube where you get a very, very slow start. Most likely you're not going to get money on day one. Most likely you're going to struggle a little bit in order to get into the partner program. And But once you get there, every single view counts towards giving you AdSense money. So people watch it, they watch ads and you get money. So the money is not coming from your viewers. It's coming from uh, the ads. It's coming from YouTube. It definitely takes off the burden of having to beg basically having donation goals and all of that but because of the time it takes you to get into the partner program it might make you pick a specific niche where you know there's a lot of traffic going on so you get into that partner program very fast youtube announced that they're gonna pay people for shorts which one way of saying it basically you can't get partnered by posting just shorts uh but it's like 10 million views or something like that which is wild it's it's just as difficult as getting 1,000 subs and 4,000 uh, hours of watch time. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Okay, where's the money? Where's the money part? Okay, uh, the other point that I wrote down is research. Now, this is the point where you figure out the platform that you want to be in, and then you're going to go ahead and find a niche. You don't have to pick one single niche, but you have to find one at some point, right? And you need to do competitive research. You need to look around to see, okay, who are the people who are in that niche, who are making money in that niche, and how are they making money? Go on their description. Uh, pay attention to, to their videos and stuff like that, right? All of the different avenues that they have. Usually they'll have like Amazon affiliate links if they're selling you, like if they sometimes talk about a product or sometimes just display a product, right? I could be like, hey, uh, actually there's... There's actually an, <laughs> I was going to use this as a, as a fake example, but there is an Amazon affiliate link for this product. For example, I put it here as decoration really, but still, uh, you can buy this thing and that thing and not this one yet in my description right now to give you an example without me having to tell you that in the video. It's in my description. If you're curious, some people click on it and I actually get money every month from Amazon, even though I don't push out products that often. One advice that I usually give, again, that's personal, that's me giving you advice, is try to get money from companies. It's, it's weird to say that. Put yourself in a position where companies cannot ignore you. Company that are, companies that are in the same domain, in the same niche, they cannot ignore you because you're going to be like a voice, you're going to be a force in that specific niche. Put yourself in that place so that they will contact you eventually. It would be weird if they didn't, right? Because company money is far greater than couple of viewers money. And I know I'm making it sound like Twitch is absolutely unreliable or whatever. The thing is, Twitch is the worst way to make money online. I'll say it again and again. We talked about the, the, the top streamers that are streaming 12 hours, 15 hours a day. This is not efficient way of making money, especially when you're starting out. You might stream 10 years and never make it to the point where you're making, you know, double minimum wage. In that case, just get a job because you're putting when you're putting in way more hours. Right. I don't like telling people get a job, stop streaming. But if you have to sustain yourself and your goal is to be independent and to make money, why would you do something where you work more, but you earn less? That just doesn't make sense financially. None of this is financial advice, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, after picking up your platform, picking up a niche, um, doing some competitive research, you need to come up with a plan. And this is where we can talk about actually how to make money. Right. Personally, 
I went with the education thing because I, I, I was inspired by a company that I really liked. And I, I found myself dreaming about buying their products. They're very expensive products. I'm not going to name them. When I went to their page, I, I saw that not only they were selling the products, but they were making tutorials on how to use the products. But on top of that, they were also making like guide videos. And, and it's a company that has to do with, with filmmaking, right? So they were making filmmaking tutorials, right? How to write a script. But it's a company that sells one specific product that you might use to to, to film something. And this is basically where I learned about the business model of giving a lot of things for free and converting a little bit towards a product. I personally started streaming on Twitch. There was a bunch of information that was like scattered throughout the internet. I decided to put all of them, put it on my channel and explain it in a way that people can understand. I usually make my videos like I'm explaining something to a friend instead of making like a script where my, my sentences are so precise and stuff like that, that if someone doesn't get that one sentence, they just they just can't follow. So that's why I most likely will repeat myself all the time. I'm not this, none of this is scripted. It turns out that I already had a background in graphic design, which is something that I could have learned uh, after starting my channel, but I already had this background. So I started making like overlays. I think 2016, I was in Italy and I was like, I'm going to make overlay packs because I heard a lot of streamers say that, Hey, my channel looks bad because I don't have any money to pay for overlays. I was like, what? Okay. I'll make overlays. I'll put them for free first. And if I make any paid overlays, it'll be like, the cheapest possible. That's where I founded my founded. I created gumroad.com slash get level. Gumroad is not my website. It's a website where you can sell digital products. I just have a page there. And most of the products are 99 cents, right? They're probably $1 now. So on my YouTube channel, I was teaching people how to live stream for free. And it turns out one of the things that you might want, it's not absolutely necessary, but one of the things that you might want is to have your channel look pretty cool. So turns out, hey, coincidentally, I sell those things or I give them away for free. So for the people who can afford it, they would have nicer things. And for the people who can't afford it, they'll still have professional looking overlays. It also turns out that live streaming requires you to have a little bit of gear, right? If you want your camera to look nicer and stuff like that. And we go back to the old Amazon thing. So I would do tech reviews, but tech that has to do with live streaming most of the time. So microphones, uh, webcams, lighting and stuff like that. And boom, link in the description is going to be affiliate. Now, some companies have contacted me and offered to pay to give a positive review. And I, I don't do that. I, I try not to get paid to do the review because that's not a review. That's an advertisement. If I do ever take money for a review, I usually like I'm, I'm clear. Hey, this video is sponsored by this and that. And I, I don't present it as a review. I'm going to be like, hey, this is the product, you know, now doing tech reviews was very advantageous for me because um, it's geared that I end up using a lot of the things you see in this room like this. A uh, little screen thing here, this uh, Govi thing, this. Like, most of the things that I actually use are things that I don't pay for, but rather I get paid for it because I made a video about it. You're going to watch the video, watch the ads. I get the AdSense money. Uh, if you end up buying anything after you click my Amazon link, I'm also getting some money. And on top of that, it's putting me in the eyes of other companies, maybe competitors. They might be like, wow, this video. My first my first goal when I first started doing a tech review was to film like the the best B-roll possible so that it would catch the eye of company. And it totally worked. Right now, I'm just ignoring a bunch of like tech reviews because I have too much stuff and I don't even have space in my apartment anymore. And the good thing is that once you end up working with big companies, they might have their own following. And what happens is that if they share your videos to their following, you get a boost in, in viewership and you grow your own audience. So at some point you become big enough that other companies, other big companies are seeing you making moves with their competitors. And they might be like, Hey, we want some of this. And this is where you start asking for money. If you're starting out, you don't need to ask for more, but the truth is a hundred bucks here and there and here and there, and you're making a living. So the goal here is to have a network of multiple sources of income that all work together and all lead to each other in certain way. Another, another thing that I'm considering, well, I've been considering for a while, or I tried to consider is creating straight up creating products for live streamers, right? Because of course, right now I'm just working with tech reviews and stuff like that. But if I came out with a product, for example, I DIY like cat ears that would move every time you get an alert and stuff like that. If I were to sell this idea to a huge company, that's a, that's a big paycheck. 
that's a huge paycheck, right? So that's an avenue that I can pursue if I wanted to. Now, you might not be able to relate because you might not want to be an educator. And I absolutely, there are some pros and cons on being an educator. There's a lot of things that I regret. And there's a lot of things where I'm like, maybe I should have been just like a, a, a Twitch gamer, right? If you are a Twitch gamer, most likely if you're watching this video, if you follow me, a way that I could describe your plan would be to, of course, play your game or stay with a specific type of game at least if you're not going to niche down to one single game but other platforms you definitely need to be pushing that specific niche or you can go to a different niche but the problem is that again if everything is not working perfectly in a network it's it's going to be harder to make money so in the beginning i gave the example of call of duty so let's say that you're at least a decent <laughs> streamer but on tiktok again every time there's a patch on the game you're on it you're going live every time there's a new game and you're doing let, let's say like a 12 hour i don't recommend those but like let's say you're, you're you're doing an event basically every time there's an event in the game so people who follow the game who are passionate about the game will learn about you i know that i, I i've said in the past no one cares about the gameplay it's not about the gameplay it's about the love for the game that they can share with someone that they think have the same love for the game why did i say it like you didn't have love for that you need to have love for the game otherwise it's gonna like you're torturing yourself at this point <laughs> but it's not all about just having fun it can't be a hundred percent fun 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 and you just don't do it if it's not fun if you want to do it as a job it has to feel like a job unfortunately there has to be parts that you absolutely hate me as a mostly a youtuber even though i have multiple sources of income everywhere there are parts of of, of youtube that i absolutely hate I hate writing descriptions, um, writing down the timestamps on my video. I hate that. Uh, looking up for keywords. I absolutely hate that. Making thumbnail is fun, but if I'm not satisfied with the thumbnail, the video still has to go up. It is almost 4 p.m. and this video needs to be up before 8 p.m. I absolutely hate the stress of this deadline that I give myself. <laughs> Always keep in mind that those are things that normal people do as a hobby, like a lot of people do them as a hobby. They don't care if they're not making money or they're stuck in a weird limbo where they can't decide if they want to go pro or not. For you to make money with this thing that people use as a hobby, you need to stand out. And I'm not talking necessarily creatively or anything. I, I love going back to the same athlete <laughs> metaphor. It's like if you're playing football with your friends on the weekend, it's very different than if you're training to be a professional football player right? If you want results of an athlete, you have to train like an athlete. So the plan would be acquire the skills necessary to produce decent content. Get rid of the whole I'm a perfection. No one cares. Your first video is going to suck. The second one probably will suck, but it will suck less than the first one. Stop trying to do too much when you're starting out. <laughs> I'm just yelling at you. Second one is pick your main platform. You should be everywhere, but you need to pick your main platform, the platform where you will be present uh, most of the time, depending on your financial situation, choose wisely. If you just lost your job and you, you think I'm going to start streaming to make up for that, you're, it's going to take you four years there. I know people who've been streaming for four years who are not making 500 bucks a month on Twitch, who are not even making the hundred dollars a month. Thank God they reduced that to $50 in order to get the payout. So pick your platform wisely if you want to go professional. Step three, do competitive research. You need to know whatever you're gonna get yourself into, you need to know it in and out. You need to know everyone who's at the top, what they're doing. You need to know people at the bottom. You need to know what works, what doesn't work, and how things are presented. And of course, how are those people making their money? And then from that knowledge, you can establish your own network of, here, here's the multiple sources of income that I'm going to thrive for, that I'm gonna try to go and get that bag. Streamer, go get that bag. Get that bag, streamer, go get that bag. All right. <laughs> One last thing I'm going to say before we, we wrap this up is you're going to have opportunities that look like good opportunities, but that are bad. If you have, I can't believe I have to say that. If you have 13 followers on Instagram and someone DMs you and tells you they want you to be a brand ambassador, you're getting scammed. You are getting scammed. There's no way you're getting off of this having made money. You have 13 followers. You are... <laughs> You are valueless to the brand, except if you manage to sell one or two t-shirts, then they did their job. You have a threshold of $200 before you get paid. You're never going to hit that threshold. And that's what they're counting on. You never hit it. They never have to pay you anything, but you manage to sell two t-shirts in their name for free. 
If a brand contacts you and wants you to buy their product in order to become an ambassador, in order to promote it, you are getting scammed. <laughs> Scam might not be the, the right word, but I'm being exaggeratory so that you can understand the, the, the implications of this. Basically, the rule is if you feel like you have nothing to provide the brand, most likely, uh, yeah, you're the, you're the customer. You're actually the customer. <laughs> you're about to provide free labor. Now, in real numbers, I, th I think Roberto Blake is the person that I watched a video um, that said that you can apply for the Amazon um, uh, influencer program at around a thousand subscribers on YouTube, which is a good coincidence. If you already have the 4,000 hours, that means that you're about to get monetized on YouTube and you can also uh, get your Amazon influencer account, boom. And then every single thing that you find yourself talking about all the time, you can give them a link to that stuff on Amazon. And whatever they buy after the clicking the link, you're getting a commission on it. I'm personally part of the Amazon program, both in the US, I don't live in the US, and in the UK, I don't live in the UK. <laughs> and I'm getting a paycheck every single month from those two accounts. And I barely like push any product really. As in, I'm not telling you, oh, go check out my products in the description of every video. I, I don't do that. <laughs> it's so hard to mention everything. But uh, another thing that companies might do, if you're starting to get, you know, on the rise, some companies will scout you and then they'll be like, hey, we'll give you kind of a large sum of money, like $2,000, $3,000 a month, if you create that content that you're creating, but for us. So every month you're getting a paid salary. Basically, you're basically working. You, you basically got yourself a job, but you work for them. The problem is that if the company goes on the rise, right? If the company blows up and they start making more and more money, uh, first of all, your salary stays the same. Uh, that kind of sucks. But you're going to say, hey, $3,000 a month, that's a lot. Sure. The thing is, they scouted you because they knew that you would probably be making way more if they did it, <laughs> right? Because they know you're valuable enough. So sometimes, Taking that contract is an absolute bad idea. It's going to suck because you're probably making 800 bucks at this point, right? And then someone offers you 3000 and you're like, what? I'm not going to take it. But you not taking it. And then six months later, you find yourself making 5K a month, right? If you keep at it, if you make the right decisions and everything. Uh, it's like, this is true story. It's something that happened to me. <laughs> and I've seen it happen to other people too. There is, there is, there are um, content creators that just you feel like disappeared from the surface of the earth. But the truth is they got recruited by a company. They probably offered them like a, a decent sum of money. And then and then it, it ruined their own career. Sometimes the company fails, like it completely goes bankrupt. And then they're out of a job, out of a career now. And uh, yeah, so think about that. Anyways, I, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to end on a, on a bad note. So uh, let me find something positive to say. If you are a gamer, you can make money. The thing is you just need to act like it was a job. Again, the whole niche thing. I see people on TikTok just pointing up to stuff and getting millions of views. You can convert that, especially if you post those same TikToks to YouTube Shorts now. Soon, you're gonna be, you're gonna have like an, an incentive to post that stuff, but you need to be everywhere. You need to put yourself in a position where it's impossible for companies in your niche to not know who you are so that they reach out to you or you reach out to them and they already know who you are. I personally almost never reach out to. Yeah, no, I don't think I, I, I reached out to one company. They ignored me and then I blew up and then they sent me an email and, and I ignored them. <laughs> But that's because they were doing like scummy, scummy tactics. But I actually advise you, if you have the guts to do it, to actually reach out to companies and you feel like you're in a good position and you have something valuable to offer, definitely reach out to them. That's something that I should do, but I just, I don't know. I just don't like doing that. Uh, stop trying to sell t-shirts. No one's going to buy your t-shirt. Uh, stop trying. Like no one, unless your t-shirt is amazing. And in that case, if it's amazing, it probably has like long sleeves with design on the sleeve and all that. Uh, then it's probably like $50. No one's going to buy them. Merch is extremely hard to sell. So if you're going to sell merch, sell something that is affordable, like stickers, pins, pens, socks, mugs, something that, that might be useful, but that is small, that you can gift and things like that might be the best thing for you to go for. Look up Etsy and type the name of your niche and get some ideas of what people are doing. But basically study the market. Just because, you know, your favorite streamer, your favorite gamer is selling a ton, seems like they're selling a ton of merch, doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. It's, it's the hardest part about being a content creator is to figure things out. But please, 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 if you take anything from this video is that all of that is with 
decent content. I know you've been scrolling on social media, you've been seeing other people's content, and I know you found yourself saying, ugh, this is not even good, but you're looking at someone who's making 20K a month. <laughs> So yeah, you can do it. You can do it too. You just have to do all the steps that I mentioned on top of making decent content. Decent, decent. Don't go for amazing stuff at first. Go for decent. Let me know if I forgot anything. Let me know if there's any uh, other avenues that uh, you know people are making money from or that you're making money from. And uh, if you enjoyed that video, you probably will enjoy that one where I talk about the truth behind being a content creator. Basically, I talk about a bunch of stuff that people don't want to talk about. It's kind of a, it's not a negative video, but it, give, it gives you a perspective of the mentality of being a content creator. So check it out. I will see you guys next time. Go out there. Make me proud. Get level out.